Skydiving is a popular sport, although I don't think I would ever want to try it. Uh, what we're going to do today is simulate it um, to just see what the, uh, you know, what it would be like to uh, skydive and then pull a parachute 60 seconds after the jump. So we want to simulate it for 90 seconds. And uh, the skydiver uh, pulls the chute and then the drag coefficient increases to slow the descent. So we're going to start with 5,000 meters of elevation when the airplane and the skydiver are moving at 50 meters per second. And that's when the skydiver jumps. Uh, the drag coefficient without the parachute, we're going to assume that's 0.2 newton second squared per meter squared uh, while free falling and then it increases to 10 with the parachute open. So we're going to use a gravitational constant of 9.8 meters per second squared and the mass is going to be 80 kilograms for the skydiver and the chute. Okay, so he's going to jump out. Initial condition is 5,000 meters and, uh, and then proceed to fall. And then after 60 seconds, we'll open the chute and increase the drag coefficient. So we want to simulate both the X and the Y, uh, the horizontal and the vertical. Uh, velocities and positions of the skydiver. Okay, so let's just make a uh, list of the variables for this problem. We're going to have, first of all, um, the x and y coordinates. And then we'll also have um, the velocity in the x direction and the velocity in the y direction, and then the total, uh, the magnitude of the velocity as well. Let's look at some of our equations then to define the, uh, this, the motion of the skydiver. So we have um, dx dt is going to be equal to velocity in the x direction. Uh, dy dt is going to be the velocity in the y direction. And then uh, we're also going to have a, uh, a force balance now. So the, 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 um, the drag um, you know, is, is going to have a drag coefficient, but um, let's see if we can find that, that the, uh, we're going to be, the force of drag is going to be proportional to the square of the velocity. Okay, um, okay so what we're going to uh, do then is write a force balance, and so we're going to have mass times acceleration and that's going to be in the x direction, um, is going to be equal to negative drag coefficient times the velocity in the x direction squared. And then also for y, we're going to do that for y as well. And, uh, and then in this case, we have gravity. Okay, so m times g. And then we're going to have a force in the opposing direction which is going to be our drag that's going to be slowing us down. So if we were, if we were going in, uh, if we were uh, somehow fired out of a cannon or something like that, then this would be a negative sign. But since we're falling down, it's going to be opposed to that uh, falling faster. So we're going to um, increase. We're going to have a positive there. OK, and then the velocity, um, the total velocity is just going to be the different components uh, squared. If we had a velocity in the z direction, we would also include that there as well. If we don't. Okay, so here are our equations that we're going to express, and then we want to simulate this over 90 seconds. Okay, so let me go ahead and put these equations uh, right here. And let's start. I'm just going to create a, a folder, uh, just uh, three blank text files. The first one that we're going to work on is skydiver.apm. So go ahead and just create a new um, you know, text document, and then you can just rename that as skydiver um, skydiver.apm. Yeah, I'm just going to throw that one away because I already have one. Okay, so um, I'm going to come to a Notepad. Uh, this is Notepad plus plus. It could be any text editor. Uh, but what we want to do is is just add, start adding in constants, uh, parameters, and variables. Constants are those that are not going to change. So I'll just add constants. 
uh, there's my gravitational constant. Um, and then I also have the mass of the skydiver and the skydiver's pack. Um, next, I'm going to add a parameter section and just add my drag coefficient. So I'm just going to add, in these cases, if you know, for my parameters, that, that value is actually going to, to change. So I'm not going to declare it as a constant, but in parameters, either the optimizer or the user can change uh, those values. Those are inputs to the system. Then I'm going to move on to variables. I'm just going to add the variables. Uh, my initial condition for x is going to be 0. I'll just define that as 0. Uh, y is going to be 5,000 meters. That's going to be the vertical position or elevation. And then um, I also have an initial, uh, let me make this just a little bit bigger here, um, initial skydiver horizontal velocity. Um, so that's that's when he jumps out of the airplane. He, you know, the airplane's going at 50 meters per second, and so is this skydiver. Okay, also the initial skydiver vertical velocity is zero. Uh, the plane is flying, if the plane is flying uh, level. And then we're going to also have the magnitude of the velocity. I didn't put an initial condition in there, uh, but it would be equal to 50. Uh, but we can let it figure it out. Okay, intermediates. I'm going to create a couple, um, just the forces. This is going to be the uh, force of drag in the x uh, direction. And then also the force uh, in the y direction, I have my gravity plus the uh, drag force. Um, okay, and then in equations, so this just simplifies the equations a little bit, uh, declaring some intermediates that will then substitute into the equations. I have my first equation, uh, the dx dt equals vx, dy dt equals vy. The dollar sign is just the derivative with respect to time. Um, then I also have my, my force balance in the x direction. So mass times acceleration equals force in the x direction. And then uh, mass times uh, acceleration in the y direction equals force in the y direction. And then I also have uh, you know, v squared equals the, the square of all of the uh, components, it is in this case just in the x and y directions. Okay, so here is my model. This is the, in the AP Monitor modeling language. And uh, as you notice, that you just have a couple things like comments um, are either uh, exclamation marks. You can also do uh, percent or uh, a hash sign for comments as well. Um, and, but I have main sections like co constants, parameters, variables, intermediates, and equations. Okay, so I defined, uh, I defined my model. So let's go over to MATLAB now and just um, let's uh, create a script then that can simulate this. Okay, so first of all I'm going to clear all of the variables that might be there, close all the plots, and clear the screen. Um, then I want to add a path to uh, a, the APM libraries. So to get that, um, I'm just going to come to apmonitor.com and then go over to the MATLAB interface uh, and then download uh, this. I'll just open this up um, when it finishes downloading. I just need to copy this APM folder. Okay, so I'll go ahead and copy that and then I'll paste it back into this skydiver folder. Okay, so I've pasted that in, just a collection of, of libraries to help me simulate dynamic systems. Okay, so um, then I'm going to come back to my file editor. So I've loaded those, um, just grab that from apmonitor.com, and then I can solve it. Um, I'm going to solve skydiver and uh, this is dynamic simulation mode, which is 7. Um, okay, and then I just transfer the values to uh, just retrieve the solution, and then we'll move on to plotting this as well. Okay, so let's do this in Python as well. I'm just going to import the APM library, and uh, that's apmonitor.com, and then I'll solve it as well. So let me go back and just get those for Python as well. I can do this in MATLAB or in Python. I'll just show both of them. Okay, and there's the uh, Python libraries. I'll go ahead and open that up. The only thing I need in this case is apm.py. Okay, and I'll just go ahead and put that in this folder as well. 
Okay, so I have apm.py for Python and just the apm folder for MATLAB. And uh, okay, so I'm going to go back to MATLAB now. So I solved it. Let's create our first figure. Um, I'm going to create a new subplot just with my positions on it. Um, I'm going to plot uh, z dot time. So it's going to return uh, a value, a values into the z structure, and I'll get my x variable first. Okay, I'll plot that first. I'll hold on to that plot so it doesn't uh, replace it with my next command, and then I want to also plot y as well. And I'll plot that in blue. So x is going to be in red, y is going to be in blue. Give it a y label and a legend. Okay, and then let's do a second subplot just with the velocities and I'll plot uh, the x velocity um, and then the y velocity and then let's also plot the total velocity as well. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to put time as an x label, y label is going to be velocity and then uh, give it a legend with those three. Let's do a, a second figure as well just to show in the x and y coordinates. Um, so I'm just going to plot x um, x and y, uh, just as see the profile of the diver as as the diver falls, skydiver falls. Okay, so here we have x label position uh, in the x direction, uh, position in the y direction. Okay, so that's our um, MATLAB script. Okay, so we have our model, we have our MATLAB script. Let's go ahead and finish the Python script. So very similar, we're just going to import matplotlib um, and then create a new figure. Uh, first subplot, um, okay, so I'm just going to put this this MATLAB script, see if we can just put it right next to it as we go down on the Python, okay, um, so they're going to be very similar um, in terms of the syntax for the Python and the MATLAB. Okay, so just don't forget to do the show um, at the end for the, the Python. And the other thing that's just different is you need to just import uh, PyPlot the map from the matplotlib uh, library if you don't already have it um, default loaded. Okay, so um, anyway, so I create these, uh, these two scripts. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and close these out um, and then I'm going to solve this in, in MATLAB. Okay, and um, Okay, let me close this out too and go back over to Skydiver. The last thing that we need to do is specify um, which uh, time points we want this to solve at. So I'm going to create a new file um, and uh, this will just be skydiver.csv. This is going to be a data file, comma separated value file. And uh, then I'll open it up with Excel. And I'll put time there, and I'll do 0, 0 0.1. Um, let me just do uh, increase by uh, you know a factor of 2 um, for all of my time points. Okay, and I'll just go out to about 60. I guess I need to go out to 90 um, for my first um, it was total. But we want to go to 60. And then I'll start um, going incrementally as well. Here I'll do equals 60 plus the uh, time point. So the reason why I'm doing this is because if you take too large of time steps when there's some fast dynamics happening, then you might miss some, some interesting things that are happening with the simulation. Okay, but I want to go out to 90. I'll just stop it there at 90. You can put whatever times you want in there, but those are just the times that that uh, I'll put in there for the simulation. Now the other thing that we need to do is just in our, um, if you remember, our drag coefficient is going to change at uh, at 60 seconds when the chute is pulled. So um, I'm going to put a C value there, okay, that's our drag coefficient, and normally it's 0 0.2. Okay, so 0 0.2 nominally, and uh, and I'm just going to fill down uh, that and then at 60 it's going to change to 10. So um, I'll change that to 10. If I wanted to have it happen right at 60, um, you know, I could do, let me go ahead and just insert um, one more right here and I'll have it happen right at 
uh, 60 and change to a value of 10. If I change this value to a 10, then it's going to interpolate between these two. And so it, it'll look like the shoot opens over the course of about 8.8 .8 seconds. Uh, but that is not the case. We want it to open very rapidly. And so we want the drag coefficient to change in the course of a very uh, small period of time. Okay, so I'm gonna, it says, do you want to uh, keep this in tab delimited form? Actually, um, yes, I'll keep that in that form. Actually, I want to do a file save as, and instead of tab delimited, I want to do a, a comma delimited uh, form. So let me just change that. Um, see if I can find CSV here. Okay, so there's one. I wanted to do a CSV that's comma delimited. Okay, there it is. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. Okay, and I'll say yes for keeping that format. And I'll go ahead and close it. I don't need to save it again. Uh, but let me open it up just in a text editor just so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so I just had time, comma, C, and then all of my values. You can see when it changes to a value of 10. Okay, so now I have my uh, simulation set up. Let me go ahead and solve this in MATLAB first. I'll go ahead and open up the M file. Instead of Notepad++, I'll open it up in MATLAB just so I can run it uh, from the MATLAB environment. And, um, and then next I'll do Python, and we'll just see how, how those uh, compare. So I'll go ahead and just uh, put a breakpoint here. Um, I'll just put a breakpoint here on the solve command. Okay, so I'll run, um, and, uh, and then I'll hit uh, you know, step. Okay, so step through. But what I want to do now is just go over to my um, let me go over to my command window here. It's in debug mode. Let's just take a look at y. So I have y dot names. Those are all my names. Uh, y dot number of variables. That was seven. And y dot x. Okay. So if I do y dot x dot time, then I get all of my times. Y dot x dot c, and they're all my drag coefficients. Um, but I don't want to do y dot x dot variable a lot of times, so I defined z uh, was y dot x. Okay, and then when I hit z, then I can do z dot time. Um, z dot time. There we go. Um, okay, so I have z instead of uh, you know doing y dot x. Okay, and then I'm going to plot those. So let me step through this. Um, I'll step and just create this plot. Okay, so I'm going to do the first one, uh, the second one, there's my Y. I'll add my Y label, my legend, and then I'll add my second subplot. And uh, just continue down through, add my velocities. And so there you can see all of my velocities when the chute opens. Uh, you can see I open my chute at about 1,500 meters. And then my, uh, the descent uh, uh, rate decreased, okay? And then here is my descent profile. Okay, so there is my descent profile. You can see that um, it was plotting it at the time points that I requested. And then there's where the chute opens and it starts to fall just a little bit more gradually at 60 seconds. So it made it to here in 60 seconds. Here's the next. 30 seconds right here. Okay, so let's try this in, in Python as well. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and close out of MATLAB. And uh, let me go ahead and just open this up, right click it, and open it with the IDLE editor. And uh, I'm just going to click Run on this. Okay, so it says no module named APM. Looks like that got. Um, Okay, that disappeared somehow. Okay, so I'm going to go um, grab that again. Open it and uh, copy. Okay, and then uh, go ahead and paste that in here. Okay, so let me try that again. Uh, run module. Okay, so it's going to run. Um, and give me the same solution that I saw in MATLAB, um, just running in uh, Python. But here are the skydiver velocities on the bottom, and then the 
positions on the top. Okay, so that is uh, this tutorial. Uh, if you want to download the files for this, um, you can do so. Um, let me just go ahead and show you where those are located. Um, so just come to uh, apmonitor.com slash do. That'll be the dynamic optimization course. Come to modeling introduction. Actually, let me go back there and zoom in a little bit. Okay, so introduction and then uh, scroll down to the bottom and then you'll be able to see uh, this exercise with the files that uh, you can download if you want to uh, just work with those uh, directly. You can just come here and make sure you extract them before you start um, working with them. Okay, but there are all the files that we just work with and that is the first exercise that we did as part of this course. Um, there's uh, some additional information that we'll cover in modeling and then dynamic data, uh, estimation, and then control.